Hey gang, and welcome to this week's High Value Publishing Session. Um, we're not doing it live this week. My wife actually had her birthday yesterday. We went actually down to the Colorado Avalanche hockey game. Uh, she's a big, huge hockey fan. And so uh, we got to go down there with the family and watch the hockey game live. We had a great time. It went into the shootout. Avalanche wound up winning. She had a wonderful birthday. So uh, sorry I wasn't able to be with you live, but I'm excited to record this little session here and get out as the second session of the High Value Publishing Series. Um, very excited to kind of talk about this one here. This is uh, an interesting topic about uh, RSS feeds and how it, it impacts publishers. Uh, I really want to um, uh, dive in here uh, a little bit. This will be a very long session, but there's some things that your RSS feeds can open up with your publication that can actually damage your content. Uh, and so you need to be really careful with your RSS feeds as a publisher, and we'll dive into that. Uh, before we dive in, though, I want to get to uh, some housekeeping here and let you know that our podcast is now available. Yep, the High Value Publishing Podcast is now available on Apple, on Google, on Spotify, and on Amazon Music. Um, hopefully soon it will be on iHeart, Pandora, and even you can find it on Alexa. But right now it's on these four platforms. So Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon. Search for the High Value Publishing Podcast and subscribe out there. If you don't mind, leave me a review as well. It would really help. I would really appreciate that. Um, but you can also go to highvaluepublishing.com. We'll take you right to our podcast website, and then you can uh, subscribe for, uh, directly from there as well. So very excited about that. We weren't thinking it was going to happen until uh, February, but it was able to happen a little sooner than that. So very excited about the podcast. I also, again, want to always give a special thanks to What's New in Publishing. Uh, again, this has become my favorite read online to kind of keep up with all the news happenings in the media space. Uh, Jeff and the whole team over there at What's New in Publishing. Uh, they're letting people know about uh, these uh, Q&A sessions that we're doing. Uh, so go check them out, what's new in publishing.com uh, and uh, subscribe to their newsletter as well. I think you'll really be happy with the information you get from there. So we're going to talk about RSS feeds today. Um, I'm going to pick on 405 Magazine here. It's actually a great magazine. Uh, I, I've actually checked it out, looked at these, but I wanted to, uh, uh, it was a great uh, publication for me to illustrate um, what's going on with RSS feeds. So if you're not familiar with RSS feeds, RSS feeds, uh, sometimes people say it stands for really simple syndication. There's other acronyms. I mean, what it really is, is it's a series, uh, it, it's code that describes the content on your website. Most websites will have an RSS feeds. All WordPress-based sites have an RSS feed, and you can very easily find it by just going uh, slash feed at the end of the URL. I'll just go there right now. And you'll see, here's the RSS feed. Now I'll go ahead and bump this up in size for those of you watching this on YouTube. Um, and you'll see this is information. This, this defines uh, what this, uh, the, the channel, in other words, the publication. And then we go into these items. So here's the item, which is each item, and I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but each item is basically an article. So it has the title, the link, uh, the publication date, all this good information, and then actually has the content right here. Um, so this is what an RSS feed does. And as you can see, they have probably about 10, 12 articles, probably 10 articles uh, in their RSS feed. So the latest 10 articles are always there in the RSS feed. Okay. So why do we as publishers use RSS feeds and why not just shut them off entirely? Well, RSS feeds can be very, very helpful if we're trying to um, you know, uh, get content out to other locations. So for example, let me bring up my iPhone here. Um, on iPhone, there's Google News, right? So Google News, uh, if you're not familiar with Google News or through Google Publisher Center, we're actually going to have a dedicated session on Google Publisher Center, Google News, and Google Discover. I believe that will be next week. Uh, so definitely tune in for that session. Very important. Every publisher should be on Google Publisher Center. Um, but Google News is a news aggregator, right? So you can get it on Android devices. You can get it on Apple devices. You can even find it out here uh, just on the web. So if you go to news.google.com, this is Google News as well. Um, what these 
aggregators do, and there's other aggregators besides this that we'll talk about. And in fact, over time, we'll talk about some of these. There's Apple News, there's Smart News, there's Newsbreak, there's Newsit, there's Yahoo News, there's Microsoft has their version. There's tons of news aggregators out there that we'll talk about. Um, but for example, the way these aggregators figure out when you have new content is they read the RSS feeds of the site. So they're reading the RSS feeds of the website and they can say, hey, there's some new content out there and then they display it in this news aggregator. For example, here's a lot of my clients who are here. Uh, you know, uh, here's T Nation, for example. Um, there's, this is their Google Publisher Center. Uh, this is their, their feed. And all of these are RSS feeds. So this is from their entire site. We can do RSS feeds for specific categories as well. Uh, and so this is what an RSS feed does. It kind of helps notify other people about new content. But I want you to be careful with your RSS feeds because a lot of publishers will let their entire content go out in the feed. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm showing you 405 Magazine. Uh, if I actually bring up 405 Magazine here again, and we take a look at an article, right? Let's take a look at, um, let's see which article I want to look at here. I want to look at, let's look at this article here. Uh, local online boutique honey. Let's see if we can find that one. I'll just go to that, that article here. So if we go out to that article, and I'm going to bring this down to normal size here again. Here's the article, and you can see it's got multiple paragraphs. It's got a, a picture of Brett Borden, who's the, un, who's the owner of this. It's got contact information, right? But it's all in the 405 uh, magazine website look and feel. Um, I'm going to use a little RSS reader. So there's lots of little RSS reader applications out there. Uh, Feedly is one that I happen to, to use and check it out. I'll put the link to Feedly uh, in the show notes here so that you can uh, take a look at those and go click out and check it out if you want to. Um, but you can see I set up 405 Magazine. And uh, within 405 Magazine, I'm just going to add in their RSS feed here real quick. Boom. And boom, there we go. There we go. So I'm going to follow this. And now when I look at 405's RSS feed. So this is actually Feedly pulling in the RSS feed from 405 Magazine. But there's a problem. Here's that launching local online boutique article. Right now here, this is what it looks like on 405 Magazine. It's the full article, one, two, three, four, five paragraphs, a photo, some links, all of that out here. But it's in 405's template. So they got ads, they're monetizing it. They got their email uh, collection that they're doing. If it's paywalled, it would be behind the paywall. If you're doing out here, we take a look at it though on Feedly. Here's the article. One, two, three, four, five. Here's the photo. Here's the links. But it's all within Feedly. All the content has been extracted from 405's website and just put here into Feedly. I can now read 405 Magazine's content to my heart's content without ever having to see an ad, without ever hitting a paywall, without ever 405 Magazine getting any ad dollars from this, and without it ever triggering a page view in their Google Analytics. Um, obviously, as a publisher, this isn't a good thing. I mean, yeah, great. You got a link down here that says first appeared. By the way, I can tell you guys are using Yoast SEO. This is a setting in Yoast SEO down here. So you're using Yoast. Um, what do you need to do to, to solve this? Bottom line, you need to restrict your RSS feeds. You still want to notify people about other content coming out, but you don't want to distribute your content for free. Any website can pick up this content. Any news aggregator can pick up this content. Any RSS reader can pick up this content, display it in their app or in on their website without you getting any credit for it, any monetization for it. So you've got to fix this. So in WordPress is a relatively easy way to do this. Um, I'm going to go into another client of mine. I'm going to go into Biz Times, Milwaukee Biz Times. Love that publication. Check it out, biztimes.com. They're one of my poster children for some of the, the work that we're doing here. Um, but I'm going to go into the 
the uh, settings and reading. On any WordPress site, you can do this. Go into settings and reading. And right here, you'll see for each post in the feed, is it the full text or is it the excerpt? You only want the excerpt. Turn off full text. Now, if you're not on WordPress and you have an RSS feed, you'll have to work through whatever content management system you have, but you only want to show the excerpt or the first couple of sentences. You do not want the full text out in your RSS feed. So that's the easy way to fix it. If you're on WordPress, I would go ahead and do it. It wouldn't damage anything. Um, we'll talk about some news aggregators later on who are actually using this content. Um, but number one, uh, and they actually have their own RSS feeds that they create that have full text. Um, we don't wanna do that. We really just don't wanna do that as a publisher. Um, there are some scenarios, if you worked out special deals with some of these aggregators that we may want to do that. But in general, most publishers, you wanna check your RSS feeds. Uh, you can just simply go to you, if you're on WordPress, go to your website URL slash feed, that will show you your RSS feed. And then if you're on WordPress, go into your settings reading, and check to make sure that you're only displaying the excerpt, not the full text of your post in the feeds. That does it. Now, when you do that, let me go back to Feedly and let me bring up um, T Nation, which is another client of mine. And let's look at, uh, let's see here, seven next gen shoulder exercises. Ah, we look in here, you can see there's the image, there's the excerpt. Ah, but then they just said, hey, Read the full article here. Again, they're using Yoast as well. So you can also change this in the Yoast settings. Um, all right, I'll show you. Here's how you do the Yoast settings. You come down here to the, let's see here, Yoast will be underneath SEO. Let's see, find Yoast. Of course, now I won't be able to find it. Oh, because I got to do it here, toggle menu. Here, Yoast settings. If I go to general. Uh, and if I go to search appearance, RSS, here's where you can put the content, right? If you want to put the co uh, content after the post, this is what T Nation is doing. They put read the full article at here. So we could literally do the same thing for uh, Biz Times. Read the full article at, and then we'll put this little variable there at post link. So now BizTimes is doing the same thing. Uh, they're doing the same thing that T Nation is doing here. This is great. This is how your RSS feed should look. Uh, and if you actually look at it, tnation.com slash feed, you will see um, here's one of their articles and you'll see it only has a very, very short excerpt, not the full content. So that's what you, that's what you want to do with the, your RSS feeds. Be careful about to make sure you're only showing the excerpt uh, in the RSS feeds. Um, you still want those feeds out there. Uh, next week, we're going to dive a little deep into Google News. We're going to dive into Google Publisher Center, which is where you can kind of manage how your publication looks in Google News and Google Discover. We'll tell you what Google News is, what Google Discover is, why every publisher should be on it, and how you can set up your website to get more traffic in from Google News and Google Discover through um, Google Publisher Center. But for now, Go out, check your RSS feeds on your publication site, and make sure that you are not publishing the entire content of your article, but rather just the excerpt. Hope this helps you guys. Uh, feel free to check me out at nearviewmedia.com. We will be back here again on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do our normal Q&A session out there. So do just go out to the high value publishing websites. You can just highvaluepublishing.com. And when you go out to the high value publishing website, you can actually then go right there and sign up for the session. When you sign up for the sessions, it's every Monday at one o'clock. Uh, you only have to sign up once and you can attend all the sessions. If you've got a question you'd like me to cover in any of these sessions, click the submit a question in advance button right there. I'll put a little form, submit it to me. I can take a look at it. Uh, and while you're there, subscribe to me on one of the podcasting platforms. And if you would leave a review, if you're finding these things valuable, it would really help me out. Thanks guys. Hope you have a wonderful week.